Hey guys, this is Nathan from RunDreamAchieve.com. Hope you're all having a great week of training. Today's topic, I want to discuss how to maintain sub nine minute marathon pace. And that comes out to around 535 per kilometer for the 42.2 kilometers. So again, we have to improve the bodies and lactate tolerance. We have to maintain faster paces for longer periods of time so that we minimize the amount of lactic acid that's building up in our bloodstream. So the, the main factor that goes into running a marathon in three hours, 56 minutes, which was which is what comes out to nine minute marathon pace. In order to do that effectively, we have to spend more time training at our anaerobic threshold, as well as paying special attention to very, very fast workouts where we're working on our speed, we're working on our leg turnover, um, so over the years when I was training for my marathons, you know, I was able to eventually lower my marathon personal best down to two hours, 19 minutes and 35 seconds. And what I teach in the running courses as well as the training plans that I have on RunDreamAchieve.com is that the, the emphasis on training much faster than goal race pace. We're racing at our anaerobic threshold. So if you're training, if you're in, in the past, you've done tempo runs that were relatively short, maybe like three to five miles in length. I recommend doing longer tempo runs, getting to a point where you can do tempo runs out toward around 16 kilometers or around 10 miles in length. That in, in and of itself is gonna make you stronger. It's gonna build your strength and stamina that you, you're gonna to need to be able to run a 356 marathon. It's a very fast time, very competitive time that a lot of athletes around the world are trying to maintain that sub nine minute marathon pace. And in order to do that, you know, I've talked about this in other videos, but it is very critical that you still focus on building your speed and working on that speed. Even though we're long distance runners, it's still very critical and very important that we work on training at paces that are much, much faster than goal race pace. So if you're, you know, in this case, in order to run nine minute marathon pace, you know, you have to be able to sustain that and to do a better and be more effective at, at that than your competition. Uh, a lot of athletes go far too fast too soon in, in the marathon and they pay for it in the second half. So proper pacing is absolutely critical if you're gonna maintain sub nine minute marathon pace for 42.2 kilometers or 26.2 miles. You cannot, you can't try to, you know, your, your focus shouldn't be on who's winning in, in the first half. You know, the, the key thing is picking people off in the second half of your race. And, and that's really, really important too, in the fact that you're, you're speeding up and or maintaining pace in the second half of the race rather than slowing down and getting past. Um, you know, over the years when I was trained for my own marathons, the key tactics I used to run uh, five minute and 19 second mile pace for the marathon or 219.35 was faster, very pace long runs. You know, I talk about this in other videos, but um, it, it is important to not just run long, slow and easy every single weekend. You have to start varying up the paces of your, of your long runs. And I'm not talking about doing that every single weekend. You know, there's only so many times you can push your body anaerobically before you start to see a diminished return on your investment. So it's very important to make sure that you alternate a faster, varied pace long run one weekend followed the next weekend by a nice, easy, relaxed long run. And also paying attention to how fast you're running on your easy day. My best recommendation in regards to you holding, getting to a point where you are able to sustain nine minute marathon pace throughout the entire race is you start paying attention to your rest, your recovery days, your rest days, because there are far too many athletes that are still running far too fast on their recovery days. They need to slow down and back off. And over the years, I've trained with sub 210 marathoners who would go out and run nine to 10 minute mile pace on their easy days, but they could go out and race a marathon at under five minute mile uh, pace for 26.2 miles. So it's very important that if you follow what the best middle to long distance runners do, and then you will start getting those results that you're that you're looking for yourself. You know, it, it's always great to go out and run a race and then set a, a new personal best, but it takes smart training. It, it's it's the athlete that's working smarter rather than harder that is going to eventually get the result they're looking for. The hardest working athletes don't always get the best results. So what I teach in the running courses as well as on um, the training plans that I created is a higher focus on a higher percentage of your weekly training, training at or below 
your goal race pace. So in this case, sub nine minute marathon pace. Um, again, that comes out to a marathon person, a, a marathon time of three hours, 56 minutes. Uh, you have to, again, hold that nine minute marathon pace, nine minute mile marathon pace, or five minutes and 35 seconds per kilometer for 42.2 straight kilometers. So again, it's teaching the body to burn fat at race pace. You do that by running at higher anaerobic efforts. You will not be able to teach the body to do that by running easy and slow. Even on your easy days, you're still, you know, you're able to run for long periods of time at aerobic uh, paces because there's such a small amount of lactic acid buildup that's in your bloodstream that you're able to clear it faster than it's building up. When we race, you know, when you're anytime you're doing a VO2 max workout where you're basically running at 95 to 100 percent of your maximum heart rate, it's very difficult to do workouts like that because you're building such a high amount of lactic acid buildup that you can't clear it faster than it's building up. So there's only a certain amount of time, usually only a few seconds to a few minutes that we can really run at those types of efforts before we have to slow down or we have to stop, uh, take a break and then, you know, go back out and attack it again. If you're doing track sessions, always focus on starting the next interval once your heart rate gets back down to about 120 beats per minute. So if you're wearing a heart rate monitor, I don't necessarily recommend wearing a heart rate monitor when you're doing speed workouts. The really the focus on those particular days should be on the effort itself. Uh, but heart rate monitor training is great for tempo runs or for, and when I'm talking about these very paced long runs, uh, wearing a heart rate monitor on those particular days is the best time to wear that. Uh, also, even on easy recovery days, uh, just to make sure that you're not running too fast, uh, hard, you know, easy pace, at least the way I was taught when I was at Malone University, being coached by Jack Hazen, Dr. Joe V. Hill was a mentor of mine as well. Uh, easy uh, effort was run, running right around 130 to 150 beats per minute. Uh, moderate was around 155 to 165. Uh, anaerobic threshold was anywhere from around 167 to 173, 173 beats per minute, and anything above really 173 beats and higher, you're training more toward your VO2 max. So again, heart rate monitor training is great, but uh, your heart rate uh, is going to vary too, depending on your age. It's going to de also depend on if the weather's if the weather's super hot. You obviously are going to have to slow down to. Um, you know, your paces are going to have to be adjusted as well. So again, to be able to sustain nine minute marathon pace for 42.2 kilometers or 26.2 miles, focus on quality over quantity. Don't get so caught up in how many miles or kilometers a week you're running. Focus more on the quality of that training that you're doing and raise the percentage of your weekly volume that you're training closer to that sub nine minute uh, marathon mile marathon pace uh, for your your 16 week block of training four months is plenty of time to train for a marathon uh, all of my training plans and running courses on on rundreamachieve.com we talk about four months now preferably you can go 20 weeks um, if you it's definitely recommended too that if you spend four weeks of running easy relaxed aerobic running and you build that foundation uh, first and then start into your 16 week block of training that's going to even set you up more for success if you're training for uh, a 356 marathon or you know maintaining that sub nine minute mile marathon pace so I hope this video was helpful for you. I think it's very important to, uh, to, to continually rehearse and mentally train for achieving this particular time. Again, a sub four hour marathon, especially a sub 356 marathon time, very competitive, very tough. Um, it, it takes a very disciplined, motivated, uh, driven athlete to run a time marathon time this fast. So again, anybody can really run slow for a certain amount of time, uh, but it's an art form to run fast. And in order to do that effectively and efficiently, you have to spend a higher percentage of your weekly volume training closer to or far below goal race pace. Preferably around 40% of your weekly volume should be spent at these intensities. If you're running 10 to 20% or 10, you know, five to 15% in the past, then start making these adjustments as you go into 2022 and into the future. If you're watching this video later on, uh, years from now, uh, spend a higher percentage of that weekly volume training at or below 
the pace that you're trying to sustain for the marathon distance. That will help set you up for success and make you much more uh, strong and, and ready to race. Always make training the most difficult part of your preparation. The race itself is not the day to be tense, uptight, nervous. You know, those, let your competition be that way. You can always focus on staying as relaxed as you can in training and make sure that you're paying attention to the hyd hydration practices I talk about in other videos. Drink more, sustain, you know, make sure that you're um, high practicing drinking rather than sipping in the race. A big mistake marathoners are making is they are sipping in their marathons. They're not drinking enough and they're not taking enough calories. Again, this is a 26.2 mile race, 42.2 kilometers. You have to be smarter over this particular distance. You can get away with that in a 5K or 10K, but you're not gonna get away with it in the marathon. So if you wanna run 356, you wanna maintain that nine minute uh, mile marathon pace for the whole entire race. Be smart with your pacing early on. Make sure you're practicing hydration in training first. Make your mistakes in training so that you don't make those mistakes in the in the marathon itself. Uh, watch your pacing early on. Run a negative split. Do not go out too fast in the first half and crash in the second half. It's not a good feeling. I've made that mistake in the past myself. It's much smarter to to run aggressive, but but in control in the first half and, and really start to focus on racing in that last 16 kilometers. That's kind of where I made it. You know, my first, I would focus on the first um, 10 miles and then make it another, you know, in the last 16 miles, really start to, to pick up the pace. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any other questions, leave me a comment below. Uh, there are, again, there's a lot of resources below all my videos, so definitely check those out. If there's anything else I can do to help uh, assist you in breaking this, this uh, nine minute mile marathon pace, I will do everything I can. So I wish you all the best and I'll talk to you in the next video.